Hello, this is Nick, and welcome to the FSF Popcast. On today's episode of 5 at 5, my topic is 5 board games to get into board gaming. Now, when I say board games, what games come to your mind? Oftentimes, when I ask people, like, what is their favorite game, or what board games do you like, their first response is things like, sorry, Battleship, Monopoly, Life, Chess, Clue, and even Risk. Those games are fine and all, but before I get into tonight's topic, first I'd like to mention that I am using the rating system from BoardGameGeek.com. And before I get started into telling you about my five picks to get you back into board gaming, let's talk about these board games that people often refer to as board games. So if we look at board games, such as Sorry, Battleship, Monopoly, Life, Chess, Clue, and Risk, most of these were made from the 1930s to the 1960s. Chess, however, was made in 1475. Sorry was made in 1929. And to give you an idea as to where these rate overall on a worldwide scale, Sorry, Battleship, Monopoly, Life all came in at just over four points on, on a scale of 10. Chess came in at a 7.2. Clue came in at a 5.7. And Risk came in at a 5.6. Now, what is the complexity of these types of games? Well, on BoardGameGeek.com, they also have a rating or a weight or a complexity level on a scale of one to five. All of these games, except for Chess and Risk, were between one and two, so they were very light on the complexity rating. Chess came out to be a rating of a 3.68, and Risk was a rating of 2.08. So what happened to board games? These, Since these are the games that a lot of people are like, oh, that is a board game. Well. In the 80s, board games started to get some popularity, but then along came video games as well. So video games started to take over. And there were very few board games, especially in the 90s, that were made that were actually really good games. And I'll talk about one of those later. What ended up happening was a lot of the board games was just focused in on the children. So a lot of the games revolved around younger age groups. There wasn't a whole lot of uniqueness about board games at that point. There were games like Do the Urkel or Don't Wake Daddy. And there were games that just were there. A lot of games basically just reskinned it, named it something else. And you had a lot of very similar games in the 90s. Very, very few, unless you were following board games on a larger scale, you would not know about other games just because of how prevalent the ones in the 90s were and they weren't that great. So let's get into my top five board games to play to get into board gaming. Number five, Unsettled, produced by Orange Nebula. This is for two to four players, recommended ages of 14 and up. It has a rating of 8.2 and a complexity of 3.16. So it sits at about chest level. It's even chest level on my shelf. <laughs> Let me give you a description of the game that the developers put in. Lost amidst the surreal and bizarre unknowns of the far reaches of the cosmos, your crew of explorers must pull together to discover the resources necessary to survive the long journey home. Unsettled is a two to four player cooperative survival adventure set in the wondrous and unnerving fringes of uncharted space. There are no enemies and no combat, only an environment where every step, every breath, every particle around you could mean immediate terrifying death. Enemies are the least of your concerns. In these incredible conditions, you must complete a series of tasks necessary to your continued survival. Perhaps the water reclamation system on the ship needs repair. Or, as usual, food supplies are running low. Before you lies a strange alien landscape, and it's up to you to complete these tasks, using whatever you find there. Each time you play, you will have a different combination of survival tasks to complete and the things you discover and the weird properties. 
So while you always start out knowing what problems you need to solve, you have no idea how you're going to use the world before you to do so, or what the world is going to do to you while you try. As you explore the environment, encountering wild and unique opportunities along the way, you will work closely with the rest of your crew and achieve your goal of continued existence. The only thing you can be sure of is each other. Lose that trust and you'll lose all hope of survival. Unsettled has a core set and inside that core set comes with two planets. Now they also have a variety of planets. Currently there are nine planets that you can pick from and they all are different and tweak the game ever so slightly to be a masterpiece. I made this my number five in games to get started with because it is so beautifully done and the writing and the storytelling is amazing. It is a little high on the complexity level, but if you play with at least one experienced player, this game is a blast. Number four. Wingspan. Wingspan is made by Stone Meyer Games, has a rating of 8.1 and a, a complexity rating of 2.45. It plays 1 to 5 players and ages 10 and up. Wingspan is a competitive, medium weight, card driven, engine building board game. You are bird enthusiasts, researchers, bird watchers, ornithologists, and collectors seeking to discover and attract the best birds to your network of wildlife preserves. Each bird extends a chain of powerful combinations in one of your habitats. These habitats focus on several key aspects of growth. You can gain food tokens via custom dice in the bird feeder. You can lay eggs using egg miniatures in a variety of colors. You can draw from hundreds of unique birds and play them. The winner is the player with the most points after four rounds. I picked this as number four because do not let the theme fool you. Yes, it is about birds, but it is by far one of my, mm, I can't say by far, but it is definitely one of my favorite games. And I have used this game to get people to want to play more board games. Number three, Catan, or also known as Settlers of Catan. Some people might pronounce it Catan, but I'm gonna pronounce it Catan. Catan is made by the publisher Cosmos, with a K, and it has a rating of 7.1 and a weight of 2.31. Plays three to four players, ages 10 and up. In Catan, players try to be the dominant force on the island of Catan by building settlements, cities, and roads. On each turn, dice are rolled to determine what resources the island produces. Players build by spending resources, such as sheep, wheat, wood, brick, and ore. They are depicted by these resource cards. Each land type, with the exception of the unproductive desert, produces a specific resource. Hills produce brick, forests produce wood, mountains produce ores, field produce wheat, and pastures produce sheep. Points are accumulated by building settlements and cities, having the longest road, and gathering certain development cards that simply award victory points. When a player has gathered 10 points, some of which may be in secret, he announces his total and claims the win. This game I made as number three because it gives you the basis of what a worker placement type game would be like. This game also has a lot of reskins such as Game of Thrones, Firefly, Star Trek, and there are lots and lots of expansions to this. Number two, Space Base. The 2018 version of Space Base has a rating of 7.6, a weight of 2.11, and it plays 2 to 5 players ages 14 and up. The publisher is Alderac Entertainment Group. In Space Base, players assume the roles of Commodores of a small fleet of ships. Ships begin docked at their stations and are then deployed to sectors as new ships are commissioned under your command. Use cargo vessels to engage in trade and commerce, mining vessels to build reoccurring base income, and carriers to spread your influence. Establish new colonies for a new Commodore in a sector to gain even more influence. Gain enough influence and you can be promoted to Admiral. Space Base is a quick to learn, 
Quick to play dice game using the core I roll everyone get stuff mechanism. I made this number two because it is very easy to learn. I have also used this in a variety of games with people who are just learning how to play board games. It also has enough strategy to keep you entertained and it allows people to talk and and just kind of enjoy each other socially. Number one, Ticket to Ride. The publisher for Ticket to Ride is Days of Wonder, has a rating of 7.4, a weight of 1.84, recommended for 2-5 to five players ages 8 and up. With elegantly simple gameplay, Ticket to Ride can be learned in under 15 minutes. Players collect cards of various types of train cars that they can claim railway routes in North America. The longer routes, the more points they earn. Additional points come to those who fulfill destination tickets or goal cards that connect distant cities, and to the player who builds the longest continuous route. The rules are simple enough to write on a train ticket. Each turn you will either draw more cards, claim a route, or get an additional destination ticket. I made this number one because it is super easy to learn and it is also very entertaining to play. Along with all of these, I have links down in the description of how to play each of these games, as well as uh, other videos such as Will Wheaton and Colin Ferguson and Wheaton and Amy Dalen playing Ticket to Ride, or how to learn Space Base in three minutes, or how to play Catan in four minutes, or the trailer to Wingspan, and there's even how to play Unsettled and an introduction to Unsettled. Those are my top five picks for this week's topic. What board games would you suggest people to start with when they want to get back into board gaming. We'll see you next time.